refractors. Um, so a half adder is basically responsible for adding a single binary bit together, and it creates a carry and a sum. So the half adder is basically just, you can think of the first part of the addition where you add, you only have two bits in, and you generate a, a single sum bit. Turn that down. And a single carry bit. Um, so here we have a sum of one, carry of zero. Um, so that's the truth table for a half adder. And from that, we can use the synthesis processes we've been discussing, in this case, um, sum of products. So the min term for each of these, um, the two that are active, you can see because A is zero, it's A complement and it would be. And for this one, A is one, B is zero, so A and it would be complement. And the other two are zero, so we don't use those min terms. So that results in the equation given there. The carry output, um, in a similar way, we can go through and derive the equation for it. So in this example, we have uh, the carry is only equal to when A and B is 1, which in terms of the min term is just A and B. Um, and we also know that's basically just an AND gate. So if we were to synthesize that as written, um, we would have this example. So we have a NOT gate going into an AND gate going into an OR gate. Um, and we might want to simplify this, especially because when we think about how gates are actually implemented, um, what you see is that, for example, this is a simple gate, a NAND gate, and an OR gate looks similar to this. So there's four transistors. To generate an AND gate, we actually um, use this with two additional transistors at the output here. And this forms the inverted um, NAND gate, which would be an AND gate. So then we have all these extra. So going through each level of transistors adds um, some additional time, because the signal physically has to transition through more layers, and will take a tiny bit more power. So in the original synthesis shown, um, you'll notice, for example, we have we would need to have a NOT gate here, which adds a bit of time. Then this physically will be made up of a NAND gate plus a NOT gate effectively. Um, and then this, again, will be made up physically because it, it's uh, the way the synthesis works is we generate NOR gates, um, NOR gate plus NOT gate. So there's quite a bit of delay in the signal. So we can improve it using the Boolean algebra we've been going through. Um, this example I went through, we're using De Morgan's law a number of times. So here we applied De Morgan's law on each half of it. And um, we can remember because De Morgan's needs both variables to be complemented, here where we have a single variable complemented, the result is that effectively we double complement one variable um, to get that complement over both. And the result you can sort of identify here as having the opposite variable complemented with an OR gate. And then the whole thing um, or with an OR gate, sorry. OR gate. So we can continue to apply that. Here we're doing it to then both sides of it. And um, I won't go through the whole thing. But the end result is that we have a somewhat simpler implementation here in that we only have um, a single NAND gate with a NOT gate, and then a single NOR gate and a single AND gate. And again, those would be implemented physically um, in this type of thing, where we have effectively a NOT or NAND, a NOR or, NA, NOR or NAND gate followed by a NOT gate. Um, so it will be a little faster and a little better. We can also notice that the sum is actually just an XOR gate. If we have access to XOR gates, um, we can just build it like this. And this is sort of what we'll be seeing the most, and I believe using in the labs. We'll just have this implementation. 
So from the half adder, we build the full adder. The difference with the full adder is that it has a carry input. So with the half adder, we generate 1 plus 0, for example, as a sum of 1, carry of 0. The carry moves up, and then this becomes a third input. So we then have carry in, still sum out, carry out. Um, so the truth table just has this additional column, carry in. Um, and basically, it's what you'd expect from the binary addition we've been talking about. So for example, if we have all three as one, A and B and A and carry in, we generate a sum and a carry out because the current column um, will have a one here. So if we had one, one, we carry in of one, and then we'll also generate a carry. Um, we can go through the same sort of logic synthesis and simplification process if you wanted for this, but we'll actually show a faster way to do this today rather than going through every um, all the logic identities. When we build it, what an easier way to think about it to for now is that we just build it from half adder. So a half adder um, block, we'll call it, is equivalent to this. So we have a and b in, sum out, carry out. And if we have two half adder blocks, you can see, for example, we have a and b are the inputs. Um, the sum output of the first one then feeds into the a input of the other one. And the other input of the second half adder is this carry in. So in this way, we're adding three bits together effectively to come out with two. And then we or the two carries. Um, so this type of schematic we'll be implementing tomorrow in the lab and sort of checking the results and also looking at some additional hardware to do this. To build n bit adders, um, we chain a number of full adders together. So in this way, this is exactly like what we were showing um, back when, oops, back when we were showing the how the addition works in that we add two numbers, bring the carry. Add these two numbers plus the carry to get a sum, bring the carry up. Add these to get a sum, get a carry, bring the carry up. So you can see that we chain the carry to the next um, column here. And here, you can consider each of these as if it's adding um, a single bit in the column. So the carry from here goes up to the next column. So we have carry out, goes to carry in. Carry out, goes to carry in. Carry out, goes to carry in. Um, and then A and B, here I've somewhat made a bus, so the A inputs all go to A, the B inputs all go to B. And then we have the sum and a final carry. So that's a full adder uh, chain to give you an n bit adder. Sorry. To create a subtractor, um, what we do is we actually use the exact same architecture, except the b input here uh, we put a negative number in. So for example, if we wanted 5 minus 7, we convert that to 5 plus negative 7. Um, what we know from before is that this type of math can easily be done if this number is in 2's complement. Um, so then this becomes, say, 5 plus the 2's complement of 7. Um, and that will give us the original 5 minus 7. So to generate this, all we have to do is have some sort of circuitry that creates the 2's complement at input B. Um, and to do this, we know, for example, if we have a binary number, let's make it four bits so it's the same. If we have a binary number, we can generate the two's complement by taking the one's complement, and the one's complement is the inversion of this, so for example, zero, one, zero, zero, and then add one. So this is one's com, and add one, zero, one, zero, one. So this is the, uh, the two's complement of that original number. So physically, how we do this is we just use XOR gates. Um, an XOR gate, as you remember, if we have A, B, Y, you can draw the truth table here, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Um, so if we consider one of these bits, say A, 
to be a can't really see that too well, but to be a enable for the inversion. So when a is zero, um, we notice y is the same as b. When a is one, y is the complement of b. Uh, so then all we need to do is add an extra one. So we do this here. This carry in we set to one to make a subtractor. Um, and then this b input is the one's complement of the number the subtract and. So you could consider it, for example, that we simply have not gates. Um, here, or as I showed, another option is to use XOR gates with one line tied high. So if we tie this to one, um, that's also an inverter. And the advantage of the XOR gate system is that we can then make what can be a subtractor uh, slash adder. So if the mode pin is zero, the XOR gates just pass the data through, um, and the carry in is zero, so no additional number is added. If the mode pin is one, this means the this block functions as a subtractor because all of the inputs are inverted and carry in is one, so an additional one is added to the input number. The arithmetic logic unit is a more complex version of this. So with the ALU, this is what we have in microcontrollers. Um, and we typically have some sort of data Uh, and the class notes have a kind of the full example I went through yesterday. I'll just show the block diagram. We'll have an instruction. And typically the instruction will come from a big, uh, like a program. So you'll have written a program that has a whole bunch of instructions in sequence, and it'll operate on them. So the instruction uh, will have some control logic that it passes. And this will affect how the data is passed onward. And we'll have an ALU. So the ALU, or arithmetic logic unit, um, is actually doing, for example, adding two numbers, subtracting two numbers, based on the instruction and how the control logic adjusts things within the ALU. So for example, we could have um, data. You can think of variables. So when you're programming, you have you know add a plus b. So a and b are still stored in two registers. Um, based on the instruction that's loaded, this output here, and there might be multiple outputs. For example, we'll take a minus b. A different instruction um, here will force the control logic. For example, so when I showed this subtractor we could see how the mode pin is just one or zero. So the simplest ALU, you could think of an instruction of just one or zero, means add or subtract. The exact same inputs, you don't rearrange them at all. Um, so you have the same variables, and a different result comes out of it. And that result will probably be stored somewhere else or stored back in the same register. Um, and the, the notes go through this, the arithmetic logic units as well as the adder and subtractor are in the books, and I believe that's referenced from your syllabus. Um, 